Hello, and this is part one of me making a horror game on Roblox Studio. In part one, I'm going to be making a pathfinding AI enemy, like this guy. So even if I go behind a wall, you'll find the quickest route to get to me, like this. And yeah, we'll just get straight into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to Plugins, Build Rig, and import a, a mesh rig, or a block rig, whatever you want as your villain, or your, your enemy. Now, they, um, he, we're not actually going to see a lot of them. Um, we're just going to call him for them a creature. Um, yeah, we won't see a lot of them. They might just be like, near the end, I'm thinking. So I don't want it to be too much like, like Granny or Peggy. So, okay, once you've got this, we're going to get an, an animate script, which I'm just going to get from another game that I have. And I'll put it in the description. And yeah, essentially, just, it's it's like this the usual one. I think um, the way you can get it is if you press play to play it, and then the animate is here. That's that is one way to get it. But what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to use this one. And yeah, I'll put it in the description. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to add in a script. I'll name it the main script. And then the variables. Now I will, I must say I've got the, this script I've kind of made myself by using the Dev Hub and GNOME Code. So thank you both. So local pathfinding is game gets service. Pathfinding service. Local players equals game gets service. Players local run service equals game gets service. Run service. And then local path equals pathfinding create path. Now this is an Now I'm we've we we've never done anything like this on my on my channel, so I just thought I'd go I'd go a bit slower maybe with this. So this is this is yeah agent parameters. So this could be the agent height. Um, this is just so that when they go around corners, like if I was standing here and there was a wall, he would go around and he wouldn't get stuck because the script would know his height, which we're going to put as eight. If, if you're, um, like the way you can, um, we can check, just get a part and then just scale up like that. So yeah, he is actually six, but the reason I'm going to do eight is just because it might be a bit better. But yeah, I guess we could put six. Um, and then agent radius, do the same, except go across. Now, actually I do need to show this. Um, so as you can see, four, five, possibly six, you then need to half that to get the radius. So, and the reason I do six is so he doesn't get stuck at all. If you do it exactly, you might get, you still might get stuck. So yeah, so you get the, the length and then divide by two. And then agent can jump. We're actually gonna set that to false. But we can change that later. And then cost equals to so water, it's gonna to equal to hundred and danger zone equals to math.vr. I'll explain this in just a second. Okay, then local character equals script dot parent. So yeah we could work, we could just call that creature. Actually we'll keep this character. A local humanoid equals character wave child humanoid then local wave points equal equals nothing a local next wave point index equals nothing a local reached connection equals nothing and then local blocked Connection. Now we do the first function, which is the local function find target, and that's going to be so the local max distance. We we just might set it to 500 or something because we're going to be having them on a cruise ship. I've decided, I um, thought for my game, and so we kind of we want them to be able to be found. 
but then we don't want them finding people in, in like if there's a lobby we don't want them finding that we don't want them tracking them so yeah so local nearest so we can't do like map dot huge for instance because then if no one's in the game probably won't work but we'll, we'll just keep it as 500 for now so nearest target you can just leave that like that and then full index player in pairs players get players do if player dot character then local target equals player dot character local distance equals character dot humanoid part dot position minus target dot humanoid root part dot position and then at the end we're just going to add dot magnitude because that it, it just makes it work <laughs> I, I think it changes the vector free to a single number which we will be using now actually if distance is less than max distance so it, it's easier than going if distance select is less than vector free on you which it just gets confusing Okay, so then nearest target equals target and the most important thing, the max distance equals the new distance. So now if, let's say, I'm getting chased by this creature and then one of my friends comes along who's even closer to the creature, it will lock on them instead of continue with me. And then, okay, so I'm just going to go after this end. Um, if distance is smaller than 3 or 5, then we're going to attack, so nearest target, dot humanoid, take damage. You can just kill it, but I'm um, like kill the player, but I think it might be interesting if they just take damage for now. And then we're, at the end of this, we're gonna return the nearest target. Now after this, we're going to do a local function, which is gonna be follow path, and to the destination. And so local success error message. If you recognize this, we use this when we did um, data saving. And so we're gonna do path, compute async, character, dot primary part, dot position, destination. Okay, then after this, if success and if path or, or and path dot status equals equals enum dot path status dot success then waypoints equals path get waypoints. So it's pretty much so like um as it's running it it will create a new path with different like path like, like different waypoints as it says here different get waypoints and we just add a add brackets there okay so block blocked connection equals path dot blocked connect to function blocked way point index if block waypoint index is is bigger or equal to next waypoint index then blocked connection disconnect and then follow path destination it's not happy with that because it's there's nothing in like equal to it but Believe me, it, it should work, hopefully. Okay, and then, so if not reached connection, then, oh, okay. then, then, um, reached connection equals humanoid, move to finished, connect to function, reached, then if, reached and next waypoint index 
is smaller than number of waypoints, then next waypoint index plus equals one and humanoid move to waypoints next waypoint index dot position. <coughs> okay. Or else we're gonna do reach, reach connect, reach connection, disconnect, disconnect, and we're gonna do the exact same except for blocked connection. Like that. And then after so we're leaving beat me at least like that, we're going to do next waypoint index equals two. And then humanoid move to waypoints next waypoint index dot position else warn path not computed and then error message and then after this we're going to do while wait because while true do crashes the game. Um, local target equals to find target and then if if they have a target. Okay and then and then ju just to just to test it we're going to we're just gonna print target.name just to see if that works as well. So just Okay it's definitely noticing me but it's not coming after me. Okay. So I think usually we have to grab the grab the model or grab the character, anchor it and then unanchor it. So it unanchors un un everything. Now we'll see. Okay, now it's animated, so that's definitely worked. However, it's not coming after us, which is fine, we just haven't added that in yet. So after target on aim, which it's definitely got us, so now we're going to follow the path of target dot humanoid root part dot position. And hopefully now it's going to spawn back a little bit. When we come in, it will. See, yeah, it's gone after us. And here we go. If we can move around here, okay. And it's still coming after us. And just to test, we are going to put a part in between us. Um, let's put like ten, then like that, and then we're just going to spawn here, and then and then see if it goes around the part. So we're spawning here, yeah, and it goes around the wall. And as you can see, it's, it's perfect. Sometimes if you're going at it like like this, it will, but, but as you can see, yeah, it, it will find the quickest way to you. So like, obviously that's the quickest way. And as you see, yeah, that they've left themselves loads of room to go around. But, and then if they hit us, like if we're within, and then there we go, we'll go after the next person, which is then me because I've respawned. Well, I think we could just, just add this thing at the end. Sometimes it might still go after you, since you know, even if you're even if you've died, it might still go after you. So if distance is, is less than max distance and target dot humanoid dot health is bigger than zero and then hopefully that should still work. We'll just test it out. We spawn in, still going after us because our health is and as you can see it's not going after us anymore but we do have an error. Okay that, that might just glitch it a little bit but it does work. Nearest target dot Okay, I'll tell you what, we'll 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 get rid of this. Again, it, it it might it might work. It might it might still work. But yeah, it's complete. If it, it's if it doesn't work, you can just add that in. So I don't think I just don't like errors. It it doesn't it will still work, but Okay. Well that is the end of the video. Um that's pathfinding. That's the first time I've done it on the channel and I'm very new to it. I've been experimenting it with it for games I'm thinking of making and trying to make including this one. So yeah, I have taken some of the code from the dev hub, 
which is obviously free to use, so is YouTube, um, from Gnome Code, so thank you to both, both of them. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm quite new to this, so that's why, and yeah, so hopefully I'll be doing more, like, stuff like this. Well, in the next video, I'll be doing some, like, I'll be doing, like, the keys and and doors and making, like, a, a, door, a door actually swing open instead of just teleporting open. Just using tweens and stuff. And so yeah, I'll, I'll see you in that. I'll see you in that video. See you in the next video. <laughs> see ya.